Hello, my name is Vox and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. The Nottingham Super Major took place in Nottingham, UK from the 13th to the 14th of January 2024. The tournament had 5 rounds with 332 players and 1,636 games played. The top 4 had a playoff, which is why they have played more games. Josh Roberts won the tournament with their net grounds. Joe Cool Johansson and their old Ari came second, with Jonathan Partridge running Tyranids in third. Big congratulations to all these players and apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. Before we get stuck in, we just wanted to point out we have added the points cost for the units after their loadouts. With that said, the winning Necrons list takes the popular Canoptic Court. The detachment gives Cryptic and Canoptic units reroll hits of 1 as standard, with full rerolls of your Holy within your power matrix. Your deployment zone is always within the matrix, which extends when certain criteria is met. At the start of any phase, if you control at least half the objectives in No Man's Land, it is considered within the matrix until the end of the phase. This works in the same way for your opponent's deployment zone. I like how it triggers at the start of the phase, as it allows you to move on to objectives and then open fire with full rerolls to hit. We have a host of characters, starting with Illuminator Zeras as the Warlord. He moves and has a toughness of 8, with 9 wounds, a 2 plus save and 4 plus invul. He also has a 4 plus feel no pain, to make him extra durable. To make it even more annoying to remove, when he is within 3 inches of 1 or more friendly Necron units, he has the lone operative ability. His main draw is giving your battle line troops plus 1 AP when attacking, and enemy weapons minus 1 AP when they are shooting back. It does have quite a short range of 3 inches, but he's going to want to be that close anyway for lone operative. If he manages to kill a model in melee, until the end of the game, the range of his AP buff is increased by 3 inches to a maximum of 12. He is no slouch in melee, making 4 attacks with his Eldritch Lance, hitting on freeze at strength 9, AP 3 and damage 3. He also makes 4 extra attacks with his legs, at strength 6, AP 1 and damage 1. To add even more damage, the Lance makes 3 ranged attacks with the same profile out to 36 inches. Overall, I think he is looking very competitive at the moment, at his cheaper points cost. I will definitely be trying him out next time I play my Necrons. Next we see the new Overlord with the Translocation Shroud. He has the same abilities as the usual Overlord, with the added bonus of an automatic 6 inch advance and the ability to move through units. They are especially useful for leading Tesla Immortals, as the Teslas have the Assault keyword, so you can advance every time, without giving up the serious amount of mortal wounds they can dish out. More on that later. We have two Plasmancers to lead the Immortals as a major part of the combo. They have the standard cryptic profile of movement 5, toughness 4, a 4 plus save and 4 wounds. They have a mortal wound ability, where you choose an enemy unit within 18 inches, and roll 4d6. For every 4 plus they take a mortal wound. The main reason they are included, is because they give the unit they are leading critical hits on a 5 plus. This synergizes very well with the Teslas, which make 4 shots at 24 inches, hitting on freeze at strength 5 and 1 damage. Most importantly of all, they have sustained hits too, so every 5 plus is 2 additional hits. The Matrix applies to the Immortals, so when they are wholly within, you can reroll everything which isn't a 5 plus. At the time of this tournament, you could then use the stratagem to give all those hits devastating wounds. What's more, it is a battle tactic stratagem, so the unit being led by the Overlord can use it for free via their ability. This combo dishes out some serious mortal wounds, as you get roughly 39 hits on average from each 10 man squad of Immortals, if you reroll everything which isn't a 5 plus. To add to this, the Immortals themselves can reroll wound rolls of 1, which goes to full rerolls of the enemies on an objective. If you can reroll the wounds, each squad will do on average roughly 13 mortal wounds. Apologies if my math is a bit off, but the point is it deals a lot of mortal wounds. GW have since nerfed this combo, making the devastating wound stratagem only work on cryptic and canoptic models. The Immortals Tezzers will still vaporize light infantry with 39 or so hits, but they won't be vaporizing tanks anymore. Finally, we have three Technomancers to lead the three big squads of Wraiths. The Technomancer moves 10 with his cloak, allowing him to keep up with the movement 10 Wraiths. It gives the unit a 5 plus feel no pain, and it can restore D3 wounds to a model at the end of the movement phase. They don't do a huge amount of personal damage, but they add some very nice durability. They are also great for carrying enhancements, with no less than 3 taken. The Auto Divinator allows you to roll a D6 when your opponent regains a CP, and you do so as well on a 2 plus. A useful enhancement to have, considering there are multiple ways for factions to regenerate a CP each turn. The Dimensional Sanctum gives the unit infiltrators, allowing you to start one of these squads in the midfield. This is very useful for quickly getting your power matrix going in no man's land. Finally we have the Metal Dermal Weave, which discs out a fair few more wounds. Once per phase, 
when an enemy charges the unit, you roll a d6. On a 2 to 5, you deal d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, you deal a flat 3. The race themselves are toughness 6, with a 3 plus save, 4 plus symbol, and 4 wounds. With the durability buffs from the Technomancers, they really are quite hard to take down for the points. When they make a normal move, you can select one enemy unit they moved over and roll a d6. On a 4 plus, you deal a mortal wound. And they all have the particle casters, which make 3 shots at 12 inches. They hit on 4, at strength 5, and 1 damage with devastating wounds. They are also pistols, so you can shoot if you end up stuck in combat. Speaking of which, they make 4 attacks with the claws, at strength 6, AP 1, and damage 2. They do only hit on 4s, meaning they very much like the rerolls from the detachment. They also synergize well with the strong stratagems. For 1 CP, you can make them untargetable outside 12 inches when attacked. You can also make a 6 inch move when an enemy finishes a move within 9 inches, making the already mobile unit even quicker. It is no surprise that this winning list takes 3 full squads of Wraith, with the Technomancers to lead them. The second place Aldari list takes the same choices as we have seen in countless Aldari lists in our 10th edition tournament spotlight. We see the popular Yenkan, who is a staple in many Aldari lists. This list includes the Phoenix Lord Fugan, who could dish out some serious anti-tank with Sisong. There is an Autark Wayleaper as the Warlord, with the Phoenix Gem Enhancement. Finally, we have a Spirit Seer with Fate's Messenger, to lead the 10 strong squad of Wraith Guard with Wraith Cannons. It is a bit surprising they haven't taken a Farseer. They take the max number of Night Spinners and Warp Spiders, which shows you which units are considered strong at the moment. Finally, for even more mobility, there is a squad of Swooping Hawks. These units are seen in pretty much every competitive Aldari list. I wouldn't be surprised if every one of them got a points increase in the next balance data slate. After talking about these units on numerous occasions, I thought I would cover them quickly so we can get onto the third place list. The third place Tyranny takes the Invasion Fleet, which is the same as it was in the Index. We see a Hive Tyrant as a Warlord with the perfectly adapted enhancement. The enhancement allows the Tyrant to reroll one hit, wound, damage, advance, charge, or saving throw once per turn. This is rather useful when you need to make a crucial save or wound roll. The Tyrant moves 8, has toughness 10, a 2 plus save and 4 plus invul with 10 wounds. They hit on 2s with the Heavy Venom Cannon, making D3 attacks with Blast out of 36 inches. It is strength 9, AP 2 and damage 3, a good profile for a lot of targets. In melee, they take the Bone Sword and Lash, which has the same profile as the cannon, but it makes 6 attacks with Twin Linked. They have the Captain ability for a free battle tactic stratagem, but it can be used on any unit within 12 inches. They also give friendly nids within 6 inches assault on their weapons. They will be leading the squad of Tyrant Guard, which has some durable toughness 8, 3 plus save and 4 wound bodies to protect the Hive Tyrant. They also get a 5 plus feel no pain when being led, and the claws have a very good anti space marine profile, with 2 attacks hitting on 4s at strength 8, AP 2, and damage 2 with twin linked. The Death Leaper is a lone operative with infiltrators, stealth, and fights first. They have an 8 inch movement, with toughness 6, a 3 plus save, and 4 plus infill, protecting 7 wounds. You gain a CP when it kills a character with its 6 precision melee attacks, which hit on 2s at strength 7, AP 2, and damage 2. In addition, when enemy units are within 6 inches of the model, you worsen their leadership by 1, and in the Battleshock step of their command phase, they must take the test when below starting strength, which is quite a nice buff when you are in range. Finally for the HQs, you have a Broodlord to lead a squad of the Gene Stealers. The Broodlord moves 8, with toughness 5, a 4 plus save and invul with 6 wounds. Like the Gene Stealers, you have Scout 8 inches, and the Broodlord gives the weapons of the unit they are leading devastating wounds. In addition, at the start of the fight phase, they can give one enemy unit with an engagement minus 1 to hit until the end of the phase. They make 5 attacks with their talons, hitting on 2s of strength 6, AP 2 and damage 2, with twin linked and devastating wounds. The gene stealers have a similar profile, with 1 less wound, 1 worse save and 2 wounds each. They also hit on 2s with their talons, making 4 attacks at strength 4, AP 1 and damage 1. They can reroll hits of 1, and they get reroll wounds of 1 as well if the enemy is on an objective. Together this squad could deal out some significant melee damage, with the devastating wounds and they are highly mobile with the 8 inch move and pre-game scout move. We see three squads of Termagons with the Flesh Borers, followed by the obligatory Pyrovore to launch spore mines across the map. We see two of their Pyrovore counterparts. Their Flamers have the usual profile, as Strength 6, AP 1 and Damage 1 with Twin Linked. We have one squad of Raveners, who have the ability to go off the board and reappear on the next turn. Units with this ability are very popular, as they are great for secondary objectives. It is the main reason why we see a lot of Imperial lists take a Calidus Assassin as an ally. We then have no less than three Exocrine, which have the same profile as the Hive Tyrant, with a 3 plus save and 14 wounds. 
The Bioplasmic Cannons have a nice general profile, making D6 plus 3 shots with Blast, hitting on 3 is a strength 8, AP free and damage free. It also has Heavy to give you plus 1 to hit if you remain stationary. In your shooting phase, you can select one enemy unit hit by your attack, and the rest of your army get reroll hits of 1. The shooting is pretty dangerous in of itself, with the reroll 1s being a very nice bonus on top. We have a Trigon which has the same profile with a 10 inch move. It makes 12 attacks in melee, hitting on freeze at strength 9, AP2 and damage 3, a very nice profile for terminators. The Pulse makes an additional 6 attacks at 12 inches, and strength 5 and damage 1, with sustained hits 2. It can deep strike within 3 inches of enemy models, but it cannot charge unless it is 9 inches away when it does so. We have a big squad of zone tropes, which give units within 6 inches a 6 plus symbol. They also deal D3 immortals to any unit which fails a battle shot test within 6 inches, and one model regains with the D3 wounds. Their war blast has two profiles, both shoot out to 24 inches and hit and freeze. The witch fire has blast and makes D3 attacks at strength 7, AP2 and damage D3 with the focus version, making one attack with lethal hit at strength 12, AP3 and D6 plus 1 damage. Finally we have a Harris Pex, which has the same profile as the other big bugs, with toughness 11. Its tongue makes a precision attack at 12 inches, it hits on freeze at strength 6, AP2 and D6 plus 1 damage. It is a monster in melee with 14 attacks at strength 7, AP1 and damage 2. It also makes 4 extra attacks with the claws at strength 14, AP2 and damage D6 plus 1. In addition, if it kills a unit in melee, an enemy unit within 6 inches has to take a battle shock test. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played faction with 18.98%. Necrons are in second with an impressive 10.24% of players, with Eldari in third with 8.43%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour with the key at the bottom of the screen. Chaos Space Marines topped the win rates with 65%, Followed by the tournament winner Necrons with 61.6%. The single Gene Sealer is the last in blue with a 60% win rate. The World Eaters are the first faction in the Goldilocks zone with 52%. The second place finisher Aldari comes next with a win rate of 51.4%. Thousand Sons, Admech, and Yunari all get a win rate of 50%. The majority of factions are in yellow with the Tau top of the group with 48.2% and the Space Marines on 48%. None of the remaining factions have more than 20 players with two full factions in red. All of the Chaos Warbands were unknown, with the single Deathwatch player getting a 60% win rate. Black Templars are the first chapter in the Goldilocks zone, with a win rate of 54.3%. The Dark Angels get a win rate of 53.6%, with the single Imperial Fist player getting a 50% win rate. The Space Wolves have a win rate of 45.5%, with the Ultramarines on 42.9%, and the Blood Angels on 40.7%. The Iron Hands and Salamanders both have a 40% win rate. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.